You are now listening to the Venus Cuckoldress Podcast, a place to learn all things cuckolding for the curious, the passionate, and the sexually empowered woman who wants it all. Go to venuscuckoldress.com. You'll find the new Queen's Quarters fan destination. Book a one-to-one chat with me, listen to the private podcast, and even get access to my secret Snapchat group where I share some of my most intimate encounters. Now sit back, make yourself comfortable, and let's dive right into this episode. Welcome, everybody, to the show. I'm your host, Venus. This one is going to be, wow, knock your socks off. (laughs) It's a top five list of the most shocking moments on the show so far. So get ready for this one. Man, I have been podcasting for, well, a while, since January of 2020. And in that time, I'm so amazed about All I have learned in this lifestyle about cuckolding, there have been some super hot stories. Oh my God, the hot stories. (laughs) That's just one aspect though. There's been lots of discussions about, you know, the various challenges and different success stories from couples as well. And many guests on the show who have shared their knowledge and expertise, but today, Today, we're going to be talking about the most shocking or surprising moments in that entire time span. So I put together this list of episodes that really left me shook. This is going to be so much fun. But first, I have only one announcement. That's it. Just one today. Uh, I've added some new perks, actually, some new benefits for a couple of the tiers in my supporters group, and that is the Friends with Benefits tier and the Helpful Cuck tier. They get now get access to all of the Pillow Talk video replays. So right now, if you miss a live um, event for Pillow Talk, then you've missed it. You can't watch it again. Unless you're a member of one of those two tiers that supports this podcast, then you can watch the replay whenever you want in the Queen's Quarters Fan Hub online. And also you do get now get access to all of the replays of my live radio show, Yes, I have a monthly live radio show on GTFO Radio, and um, members of the Friends with Benefits and Helpful Cuck tier supporters groups get access to all of those in the Queen's Quarters fan hub. So if you're not a supporter of the podcast, but you would like to be, thank you. You can go to venuscuckoldress.com and just click on the Queen's Quarters tab. That's where you can check out those couple of tiers that I was talking about. All right, now it's time to jump into the show. Make sure you check the show description notes for all of the links to these episodes. Now, are you ready? Here we go. First up at number five on the list of most shocking or surprising moments that left me shook on the podcast so far, I have a a little clip from Ella. She was speaking on the episode called Secrets of the Elusive Single Cuckoldress. Now, this not only left me shook, but it left a lot of guys shook as well. I had so many emails after this episode from guys who said that this clip, this part that she talked about was something they had never heard before, never thought of before, but was so profound that they felt like they had seen something and could never unsee it. It was like that imprinted in their mind forever from now on and impacted how they see the world and themselves and how they they fit into it. So I won't get into all the details, but I'm just going to play this clip. So listen up. Here we go. Most shocking at number five. When I say communication, I'm not just saying like, 
you know, I, I can talk and listen. It's like, but do you know what to say? Do you know how to describe your feelings? Do you know what your interior experience is? Or are you just closed off and afraid? Like if you've never interest, if you've, if you're not an introspective person and you've never sort of interrogated why you feel the way you feel, it's kind of be a little bit scary and difficult to, to approach those things, uh, you know, the first few times. And I really think that, you know, just let me, uh, thinking bigger picture here, because I'm a social scientist and I think big, um, when we talk about living under the patriarchy, <laughs> one of the privileges that men and male-bodied people can get away with is they don't have to be introspective about how they feel because the world doesn't interrupt it enough for it to be necessary. Like systems work for men. Systems are built for men. When systems are built for you, it's just you kind of skate through life a little bit less interfered with is my opinion, like the way I see it. And I think one of the things that may be preventing Cox from understanding how to take the fantasy to reality is that there is a lot of this high level communication and intimacy that and bonding that comes with that communication. And it may not be something they've ever really experienced before, or it may not be something that they experience to the depth that we may want. Ooh, Ella, she definitely dropped some truth bombs on the show. It was pretty amazing. Um, but she was on the show a couple of other times. Uh, we did an episode together called... Um, a revelation, cucks, we see you. And we were talking about a really controversial, hot topic, news article, science article called The Rise of Single Lonely Men. And in the magazine Psychology Today, we were we were discussing that. Oh my gosh, you have to listen to that one too. It was so, so good. Um, she also appeared on a, a bonus episode on the show. Uh, it was a recorded moan chat that we did. So we dove into a little bit more stuff too. She was amazing. I love Ella. She's wonderful. Okay, next up, I have number four, most shocking or surprising episodes or moments on the show is my interview with Dr. Justin Lay Miller. He wrote the book, Tell Me What You Want. The Science of Sexual Desire and How It Can Improve Your Relationship. And in this episode, he talks about the results of the massive st research study that he did about uh, thousands of Americans and their sexual desires and fantasies, and one of them being cuckolding. So it was so fucking cool because I got to hear what the research says or what the research showed about cuckolding, about cuckolding fantasies and, and who's having them and why. And oh my God, I was mind fucking blown after this episode because I was just like, wow, this all makes a whole lot of sense for me. And so you have to listen to it. Here's the best parts for that I found most surprising, most amazing in this episode. Here we go. I did find that there was a linkage to self-esteem, but it was really only there for men. And it runs counterintuitive to what people might expect. So you might think that men with lower self-esteem fantasize more about cuckolding, given these you know strong themes of small penis humiliation and so forth. But it was actually men with higher levels of self-esteem, more self-confidence, who were more likely to fantasize about cuckolding. And now that I've seen those data, I think, you know, actually that does make sense that you kind of have to have a certain level of security in yourself to put yourself and your partner in that position, you know, being in any type of sexually open relationship, because you'll know that your partner isn't going to leave you, you know, that this yes. is just part of sexual exploration. So, you know, having that security in the self seems to be more important than having, you know, just a broader sense of security in the relationship, at least for men. And so it's interesting when, you know, people use the term cuck as a slur, like mm -hmm. to, you know, kind of imply that this is a, a lesser person who doesn't feel good about themselves or whatever. Nope. It's actually <laughs> precisely the opposite. You know, if you call somebody a cuck, you know, uh, maybe they actually have much higher self-esteem than you do. But I think one other thing that's important to mention here is that different people are drawn to cuckolding for very different reasons. And so, you know, I also looked at how is cuckolding related to people's age? How is it related to their personality profile? And some of the things I find are that people who have 
more erotophilic personalities. These are people who just generally have more positive attitudes towards sex, as well as people who have more sensation seeking tendencies. So they just prefer more intense sexual activities, higher levels of stimulation. People who are high in erotophilia, high in sensation seeking are much more likely to fantasize about cuckolding. And that's true for men and women alike. Oh my goodness. I still often talk about and think about what was discussed on that show. It was just so fucking amazing. So the next one we have number three on the list of top five most shocking, surprising moments on the show. This is another guest I had on the show, Dr. David Lay. Um, he was actually one of the first guests I ever had on the show. And um, he was talking about cuck shame, the shame spiral um, regarding cuckolding. And oh my gosh, I really didn't know anything about this before we had this conversation. All I knew was my own personal experience where I had a lot of guys, single cucks who were dating and they were just struggling emotionally. They were struggling with wanting this kind of relationship, but also backing out with cold feet. And I never got a, a, a any kind of explanation ever. It was the most frustrating thing. And so that was one of the things I wanted to ask Dr. Lay was, what is behind this behavior? It's so unique to cuckolding. I mean, yes, it's in other areas of life, but this, it, this was really big for me. I was just like, wow, that's, this is crazy. I mean, in the best way, like I just felt so enlightened after this. And it was so, it was such an important piece of the puzzle for me to understand how got a lot of guys feel when it comes to cuckolding. Here we go. The greater the level of shame you have around a sexual desire, the less self-control people actually seem to feel regarding it. The more you hate yourself for having a sexual desire or fantasy that you feel like you shouldn't have, the greater difficulty you have controlling it and making it go away. Because the more we fight our sexuality, the more we fight our sexual desires, oftentimes, paradoxically, the stronger they become. These kinds of strategies, um, they work when we start removing kind of a lot of the energy around fighting yes. these thoughts, and, and we just start treating them like a normal part of ourselves. And that's the last thing, is that People who have more compassion for themselves and for their sexuality have greater levels of self-control. They are less likely to view those sexual desires or fantasies as an addiction or something that they have to fight. Instead, so it, it, you know, the last thing is I, I try and help these guys to accept that they're a person that has these fantasies, to accept that they're a person that, you know, these sexual desires that they think they shouldn't have are a part of them. Can you love yourself for having those, 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 those aspects to your sexuality? Can you explore how that, how those aspects might actually help you to see the world in a different way, to see masculinity in a different way, to yes. see your wife in a different way. Such an amazing interview. It just honestly left me shook. Absolutely shook. Okay, next up, this one is hilarious. <laughs> I interviewed my friend Jay and uh, he was talking a little bit about his uh, relationship experience with cuckolding and his cuckold dress and what the kinds of things that she did to him and stuff like that. And <laughs> oh, <laughs> I asked him this question, which clearly he was not ready for, as you can tell by his reaction, <laughs> about this really, really embarrassing story, but so fucking funny. So here we go. So I just want to bring this up because this is a funny story I remember you telling me. Wasn't there some sort of competition she made you enter into? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That is so funny you said that. I have not thought about that in a while. 
Uh, yeah. I was back... telling someone about this and they didn't believe me. I'm like, I swear to God, it's true. <laughs> yes, it's a real thing. Yeah. There is a gay bar back in my hometown that held a small penis contest. <laughs> and of course, my girlfriend entered me. <laughs> And it was non-negotiable that I was going to be participating. And uh, <laughs> uh, and I uh, did end up winning said contest. <laughs> For all those people who, who didn't believe me when I brought up the story, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. So, well, first of all, it was judging on like overall. It was, it was like overall. I don't – I mean – um, it wasn't like just size itself. Right. So you got to give me categories, of course. Right. You got to, I mean, it was just kind of like, you know, like body and, um, you know, it's the whole, <laughs> the whole package. You got to give me some credit. <laughs> I just remember you texting me about it and I was like, what? This is like the ultimate humiliation right there. I mean, you deserve a trophy just for that. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it was, it's not like it, there were probably like 40 or 45 people there, but this is also, this is in like a very kind of, I mean, this isn't a part of the city that is like a very alternative kind of crowd. And it's yeah. in, and it's kind of in like the gay district. So people, there's like drag queen stuff going on. Um, there's, you know, there's like striptease stuff going on all the time at like bars so it's not like that crazy it's not like you know you were at tgif fridays and then down the street there was a small penis contest <laughs> i laugh every time i listen to that <laughs> it's just so funny i can't get over it it's so funny it's the best story ever um, that was an episode that was called that time she entered him into a small penis contest. So the link obviously is going to be in the show notes in the description notes for today. But now here we are at number one. We are at the top of the list. This is the most shocking moment on the show so far. And this is an episode called blackmailed this scared a lot of people but it's also a very inspiring story because of how it ends here we go here's a little clip from the show we kind of chatted on the on the dating site and then we moved it to a messaging app and you know that's when the whole conversation shifted to the topic of bdsm and so she knew my name she knew where I lived and she knew what I did for a career. She didn't know exactly where I worked, but she just knew broadly what I did for a career. So we, you know, we exchanged some obviously messages and then she showed me some pictures and then she requested some pictures from me. And, you know, I was, it, it was fun. It was exciting. You know, um, I'm not one to just upfront like many women get like a ton of dick pictures. Right. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's, so she requested them and it was, you know, full frontal pictures of me and everything. There's no hiding behind it or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just a couple. Um, and then I sent her a video that she requested. So then after the pictures and videos were sent, I didn't hear from her. I didn't hear from her at all. It's just like I got ghosted, which I mean, at the time I was just like, wow, you know, I was like, OK. Um, but then again, I wasn't like I said, I wasn't head over heels. You know, it was fun at the moment. And I just let it. I was like, OK, whatever. It's fine. So it's like one of those days where you always remember a, a moment that was happening to you. You remember the time of the day. You remember what it was like outside and everything. So it was a Wednesday and it was around 9 a.m. And this was three days after. I had talked to this Amber lady and I just got in from a run. Like I said, it was 9 a.m. I was cooking up some eggs and my phone goes off. I got a text message, a direct text message on my phone. And it was from a New Jersey number. And it said, hi, is this Joe? And at first I was like, you know, I get a lot of text messages from a lot of businesses trying to get my business. So I was just like, oh, you know, it's just what it is. You know, it's just not in business. And then I get another text message from the same New Jersey number with my picture of just my face picture from my dating profile 
And I was like, so my heart starts to kind of like race just a tiny, tiny bit. Cause I was like, this is weird. I've never had this happen before. So I was like, yes, this is Joe. And then I get another text saying, this is Amber. And I was like, so I sent her a text message back saying, I don't ever recall sending you my phone number. And then the next text message after that was like, it doesn't matter. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I was like, yeah. okay, this is fucking weird. So, so then I was like automatically thinking, okay, she must be like some kind of fin dom or whatever. Right. It, mm-hmm. You know, it's just, it's not, it's not for me. So then I get another text message saying, are you ready to show your devotion to me? And I was like, okay, yeah, for sure. Fin dom. And I gave the good old Midwestern answer, no, and, you know, my text message. And then I sent that off and I blocked her on my cell phone. I'm like, I'm not going to deal with this. It's already weird enough that she somehow found my cell phone number. Okay, that's fine. So then an hour goes by and literally I was walking into the bathroom to take a shower and I get an email and not just in my personal, in my work email, I get a message saying from, I don't even remember the email address. Um, the subject line was titled, I remember this was devotion. So I was like, what the hell? Oh and then God. in the body, yeah, in the body of the tech or the email was just like, you can block me on your cell phone, but you can't block me on your work email. Are you ready to show your devotion to me? And I sat on the tub and I, my heart just started racing. I think I started sweating. I was getting angry. All these emotions were just running through me like crazy because this is my work email now all of a sudden. Yeah. So what else does this person, I, you know, I'm pretty sure, obviously her name's not Amber, you know, and I'm pretty sure it's probably not a lady. So I'm like, oh my God, this is just, this can't be happening to me right now. And I was 39 at the time. So I was like, I can't believe this. I'm 39 years old and this is actually happening to me. I like, you know, it's like you're alone on this island and you have nobody to talk to about this. Mm -hmm. And then I get another email from her or from this person. And I didn't, I didn't respond to the first one because I was just still in shock. I just didn't know what to think of it. I kept rereading it, rereading it. And then she was like, she, this person sent the picture of me naked the one that I sent to the supposedly Amber and it said, um, are you ready to show your devotion to me? I was, I, you know, I was just like, I cannot believe this. I just, honestly, I was like, I thought I was kind of ruined and done with. And so then I get another email because it, they were hitting me like, boom, 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 right after one mm-hmm. after another. And I was just like, I, I don't, I, I mean, I started shaking, I'm pretty sure I was having probably a panic attack at the time because, you know, I was just getting flooded with all these emotions. And it said, if you don't respond to this email, um, we're going to send this out to 20 people. And it had a list of 20 people that I knew. And those 20 people also very well know me. But they had all these names with this picture of me that I had sent to this and, you know, I thought it was in private, but apparently it wasn't. Mm-hmm. So there, there it is, the whole list of 20 people that I know. So then the very next day, of course, I got another email. And it wasn't a list of people. It was the naked picture of me. And it was actually all like it was in the people that they sent to me. It was actually my boss. And they had his phone number, his email. They had all the other office people, their phone numbers, their email in this email. And they were saying, if you don't respond, we're going to send this and we're going to contact your boss. So what is this picture worth to you? Mm -hmm. So then the next morning, it was almost like clockwork. The next morning, I get another email. Same picture a list of people saying, are you ready to show your devotion or we're going to send this out to these people? And it was a list of 30 people, 30 totally different people that I knew and they well aware knew me. And I was just, I didn't respond. I I was just like, I was thinking, how long is this going to go on for? So then this is what really like 
like just hit my heart the hardest was just the absolute, this is just the absolute worst was when they sent me a follow-up email to that one the next morning. And it was a picture of my kids. And it was like one of my f- absolute most favorite pictures of my kids. They were both together sitting on a couch and they Photoshopped my X-rated picture with it. And they had it. They wrote on that picture saying, look what daddy did. And I was oh just God. like, I was just like, I, I, my tears were running down my face. I just felt fucking awful. Just felt horrible. I was like, I got to get ahead of this. I got, I can't just sit here and live day to day as they send me, you know, 30 people at a time, 40 people at a time of like, we're going to threaten you to send this picture out to all these people. And these people were my friends. These people were my clients. These people were, you know, everybody that I knew from like high school. These were just everybody that I knew. So, so I was like, okay, I have to get ahead of this. I got to, I have just have to confess. That's just what it, what, what it came down to for me. So the first call was actually to my was wife, to my ex-wife. And I said to her, like, here's the deal. <laughs> and I was just like, I can't believe I'm, you know, I was thinking of this. I can't believe I'm fucking doing this. I can't believe I'm fucking doing this, but I have to do it or else this is going to ruin me for sure. <laughs> so I call my ex-wife and told her what was going on. And she was like, you know, honestly, like from my end, this is what she said. From my end, do not even worry about it. It is what it is. Then the next call I had to make was to my boss. I actually called my boss and I was like, Todd, here's the thing. (laughs) I was like, you know, yeah, I was like, I, I think I, the first thing I said to him was like, you know, I'm a good guy, right? <laughs> and he was like, of course, yo, you know that, I, that uh, you know, he's like, I'm, he said he was even dealing with a world of shit that day. So I was like, well, let me add on to that, will you? <laughs> so I told him that I have a lady. I, I, I honestly, I didn't go into the full story with him because I don't think he really needed to know the full story. I just wanted to say to him, like, Todd, there is a lady here threatening me via email through my work email threatening to send these compromising photos to you. And he was like, he took a long pause and he was like, Oh, Oh, he was like, is it anything you have to do with our business? I was like, no, absolutely not. And he was like, Oh, he was like, then he was like, well, I'm really hoping I get to see these pictures then. (laughs) That's what he said. (laughs) So I was just like, Oh, like the weight of like the world came off my shoulders from that. So then the very next day, this was probably the, the worst that could ever happen. So that video that I sent to this supposed Amber, mm-hmm. they sent that to me saying, we're going to send it to this person if you don't respond in 15 minutes. And that person, it was just one name. It was actually my mom. And oh. I was just like, I was like, how the hell? Did they get my mom <laughs> like yeah. out of all people? How do they, how do they even, how do they even do this? I'm just like, Oh my God. So I was like, I'm just going to have to do the same things what I did with my ex-wife and now my boss. Like I'm going to have to make that hard phone call. So I actually called my mom and I was like, mom, I got something to tell you. And my dad was on the phone too. Cause that's just what parents do. They jump on speakerphone <laughs> together when yeah. their child calls. And I was like, I have this lady here. I sent these, her and I exchanged photos. And now she's threatening to send this video, a compromising video of me to you. And my mom was like, oh, Joe, I am so sorry to hear that. You know, she's like, that sounds just awful. And then she was waiting for my dad to, to pipe in. And my dad was all quiet. And, you know, he, my dad, he's a strong Vietnam vet kind of guy. And he was, he said, it's those damn Russians. I tell you, I knew it. They're probably doing something behind the scenes. They're, they're behind this. I just know it. And so I just felt a world of relief. 
So there you have it, the most shocking episode of the show so far, blackmailed. Joe, you are so brave. The way you handle that, the most fucking terrifying experience. Oh, it's so inspiring. It's so terrifying, but it's so inspiring. Uh, I was totally shook after that story. So thank you so much for sharing it. All right, that's going to be it for this episode today. I'm so happy that you've joined me for this one. Make sure you go to venuscuckoldress.com. That's where you can subscribe to the podcast. You can check out the Venus blog. You can also ask a question for the show and even book a private chat with me. And of course, don't forget to follow me on Twitter. My handle is at cuckoldressb. Thanks for joining me today and we'll see you next time. Are you single and looking for a female-led relationship? Now there's a boutique-style private matchmaking service for FLR relationship dynamics. It's called Venus Connections. It's totally private. There's no scrolling through profiles or messaging other members. All of the matchmaking is done behind the scenes. You can learn more at venusconnections.com. That's venusconnections.com.